Hey everybody and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how easy it is to create cabinets and the face frame for them. Now I have just started getting into cabinetry making and it's really fun and super simple to do. So in this video I will take you step by step through the process and show you how to create professional looking cabinets for a fraction of the price. I use three quarter inch sanded plywood for all of my cabinets and because I'm too weak I have them strip the four by eight sheet in half at the store. For the back of the cabinet, I use a quarter inch piece of plywood and that is light enough so I can handle a full sheet myself. You know, muscles. And for the face frame, I will be stripping some poplar boards to two inches. Now there are three measurements needed for cabinets, the depth, the height, and the width. The first step is to strip both sides and the bottom of the cabinet to the correct depth. For me, that was 23 and a quarter inch deep. Once you have them stripped, you can then cut them to the height you need. I cut mine to 78 and a half inches. Never forget to clean up your workspace. I, that'll do. I found for the bottom panel, it is a lot easier to cut the width first, which was around 36 and a half inches, and then take that smaller section to the table saw and strip that to the correct depth. While we have the table saw out, we might as well just strip some pieces to four and a quarter inches. These small strips will be used for the toe kick as well as holding the top of the cabinet together. To set my table saw guide three quarter inches away from the blade, I use a scrap piece of plywood as a gauge. This is for the rabbit cuts that we will be creating on the ends of the bottom panel. We also need to lower the blade height to about three eighths of an inch. Once we have the saw set, we can run one end of the bottom panel through, flip it around, and do the same to the other side. Then, move your table saw guide slightly closer to the blade and run both sides through again. You will continue to repeat these steps until you have shaved out your rabbit cuts. As you go, feel free to break the ends off, but just make sure that you get the rabbit cut as smooth as possible because without a dado stack blade, this is by far the most time consuming part of the build and it is essential for creating those really tight corners. Once the rabbits have been cut, we can move into cutting the grooves that our quarter inch backing will slide into. For this, we will need to reset our table guide to three quarter inches while keeping the blade height at 3 8 high. And then we can run our bottom panel as well as both side panels through. The groove needs to be able to fit a quarter inch piece of plywood and because my table saw blade is an eighth of an inch thick, I will have to move the guide away from the blade just enough to widen the groove. And then after checking it with a quarter inch scrap piece, if I like the fit, I will run the rest of my pieces through. Now just remember, because all of your grooves need to be perfectly lined up, make sure that you run all of the pieces through before adjusting your track guide. After the grooves have been cut, the next part is to glue the two sides to the bottom. And let me tell you, this cabinet was a behemoth. And so trying to glue and clamp them all together on a mini foldable work table was a challenge. And it's at times like these when I think to myself, quitting sounds like a very nice option. But we continued on and through the power of perseverance and a larger stroke of luck, I was able to balance these large pieces of wood on end and was able to get them clamped up on the second try. And like any good carpenter, I added some blue painter's tape because as we all know, they are the best clamps on the planet. We will create the toe kick out of the four and a quarter inch strips we cut before. Now for reference, your average toe kick will be anywhere from three to four and a half inches tall and three to four and a half inches deep from the front of the cabinet face. My existing cabinets were four and a quarter inches off the floor, thus my toe kick was four and a quarter inches high. And then using pocket screws, you just need to create a rectangle that will sit four inches back from the cabinet face. 
Now there are so many different ways to add a toe kick and I have found for myself that creating the toe kick separate from the cabinet carcass is so much easier because you just have to focus on two separate rectangles and as long as you can do some simple math to take the toe kick height into consideration to the final height, it makes life so much more simple. And depending on the width of the cabinet, it's always a good idea to add extra bracing for structural support. Now as we wait for the glue to dry, it is a perfect time for me to sit down with the puppy and add that if you found this video helpful at all, to softly tap the like button. As a general contractor, I love showing people how to create DIY projects, but the videos can take a lot of time to make and it would mean a lot to me if you hit the subscribe button and join to this awesome DIY community that we have going here. All right, now back to it. After the glue is dried, we can add the quarter inch back panel. For this, we need to measure the inside width of the frame as well as the inside length of the frame. And don't forget to add the depth of the groove. To find the dimensions for the panel, you need to take the depth of the groove, multiply that number by two, and then add that to the width and the length, which gave me 35 inches wide and 78 and 7 eighths inches long. Then once it's cut, you're gonna work the panel into the grooves and lightly clamp the sides to keep the panel from falling out. To snugly secure the panel, we needed to add a top piece to the cabinet. And to do that, we are going to take another one of those four and a quarter inch strips and add a groove the same way as we did before. Once the groove is in, then we are able to cut it to the correct width and to tie the pieces together, we're going to be using pocket screws. And where you drill the holes are extremely important. So just make sure that they are on the large side of the groove and that the groove is facing down. You can then take the piece and slide it in so that the panel fits the groove. And then once it's flush with the sides, you can screw it together. For extra support, I went and added another piece on top. For the face frame, I had to strip all of my poplar boards to two inches thick, and then once they were stripped, I was able to take the measurements of the lengths needed. I always start with the sides of the cabinet and get those cut first, and then using those as a guide, I'm able to cut the widths that are needed as well. I had to cut five width pieces, usually one for the top, one for the bottom, and one for each drawer you're going to make. If you are creating a cabinet without drawers, all you need is a top and bottom piece. Add pocket holes to each end of the pieces and then screw them into the long piece in the orientation that you decided for your drawer layout. For this specific cabinet, I have a 10 inch drawer on the bottom and two eight inch drawers above that. Once it's screwed into one side, flip it around and secure it to the other long side piece. After creating your stunning cabinets, you're probably going to need cabinet doors and luckily for you, I created a video on how to do that as well. I will leave the link in the description below and after this video, you can go check that one out too. After checking the fit of the toe kick and the face frame, I add a trail of glue all the way around the cabinet edge and then I carefully place the frame on top. After I'm satisfied with the alignment, I pin it down with just a couple of 18 gauge pin nails. And finally, the very last thing we need to do is to add the backing that we will be using to secure the cabinet to the wall, as well as the drawer slides to the cabinet. This is the reason why we cut our groove three quarter inches in, so that we could easily fit our backing wherever it is needed. Usually I just add backing to the top, middle, and bottom, but because I was adding drawers on the lower end, I needed to put some on the bottom sides as well. And that's all it takes. And I'm going to add a nice coat of primer and paint as well. But first I need to create the shaker style cabinet doors for this cabinet. And if you would like to see how those are built, you can watch that video here. Once again, thank you so much for watching. Share this with your DIY buddy and I'll see you next time.